Hello, folks, and welcome to the new Let's Play I'm starting. It's The Last of Us. Joining me for this one is going to be Thornbrain. That's me. And Yoshi. And me! It's him! Um, this is going to be a little bit more of a serious game than some of the other ones we've done, but uh, I can't. don't expect this to stop us in the comedy aspect, but uh, hey, it's Joel! Let's talk about this in the morning, okay? The game begins very abruptly, as you can see. Also, the human models are fantastic for a game of its time. Uh, the Last of Us was one of the Twilight games of the PlayStation 3. In fact, it was probably the last really amazing one they released for the system. As I say, the swan song. So it really started pushing the system farther than any other game did of the generation. But it looks great. What's this? Your birthday? So I'm going to be playing this pretty much straightforward. I'm not going to necessarily find all the items in the game. Um, I'm going to try to find as many of them as I can. But pretty straightforward uh, playthrough beyond that. I forgot to put the subtitles in one video. They will appear in part two from then on, so don't worry about that. I mean, this is, so this is Joel. <laughs> it's nice, but I, It's his birthday. I think it's stuck. It's not... What? No, 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 no. And he got a watch for his birthday from his daughter. Uh -huh. Did you get the money for this? Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. Oh, and she sells hardcore drugs. <laughs> oh, honey, thanks for the watch, but I have a phone for that. <laughs> Worse birthday than Pizza Joe. Oh. Thanks for ruining my birthday. So he's a single parent uh, with uh, about a 13-year-old daughter, 13, 14. Obviously, uh, if you know anything about the game, this is clearly before the world goes to shit. Uh, honey, I can see the time on that phone, too, so th thanks again. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so the music you hear through this is very minimalistic. It's done by an Argentinian composer named uh, Gustavo Santayaya, or Sayaya, or I keep on mixing up. <laughs> Santayaya. Um, but uh, he plays a lot of the Spanish guitar throughout, gives kind of a Western feel, but it's very minimalistic. Hello? Sarah, honey, I need to get your daddy on the phone. Uh, Uncle Tommy, uh -oh. what time is it? I need to talk to your dad now. There's something... Well, that's Uncle never good. Tommy? Wrong Hello? number. I can see what time it is. Shit, I got him a bad gift. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm going back to sleep. So you start the game in control of this little girl. In that? sleepy dopey mode where she's walking around. Look at the details in this room. Just for a moment. A little interaction with the phone first. <laughs> Phone's dead. You can see a reflection in the mirror back there. No details wasted, though. There's a lot of... You can just look around. There's posters like, Dawn of the Wolf. And the badge. And remember Halican Drops? Oh, yeah. Big band, yeah. I thought it said Pelican Drops. <laughs> Pelican Drops. <laughs> Pelican Drops! <laughs> Drop the Pelican. <laughs> now, look. There's something over the interactive. Dang it. Over there. Usually there's a highlighting <laughs> symbol to, inter to be able to see interactive items. This one's in case a birthday card. Aww. Let's see, you're never around. You never had the time the music went to, but I love you anyway, Dad. But I forgot to give this to you, so fuck it. Here's a watch, you dick. <laughs> you're not a fossil yet, because that means you're dead. Alright, so since everything's weird, let's go find Daddy Joel. Dad? The controls are nice because they automatically kind of give you this tired amble. He must be in there, but I really got to use the toilet. Um, all right, never going here. There's one more, more little interactive item. This game does a very good job of telling you a story without telling you. So like this particular newspaper is mentioning a mysterious infection. That seems to be spreading. Hmm. Weird. <laughs> Wacky. Bullshit. Where's the funnies? <laughs> Garfield. I'm looking at the mirror like, oh, I'm so tired. Fuck it. All right, let's go Daddy? see dad. And you can see that uh, Pelican Drop t-shirt she's wearing now. <laughs> <laughs> I already forgot the name of the band. What was it? It's Halican Drop. Halican Drop. Yeah. Here? Seem to be somehow connected to the nationwide Where the pandemic. heck are you? We've received reports that oh, hey, news. I can never be bad in a game like this. Nearby, like a block away. <laughs> Oh shit. Hey dad, how come you got a great TV and mine is old? <laughs> I know the timing isn't great for this question, but I just remembered. Dad? 
Now, notice how her body language is becoming a little bit more nervous. She's moving a little bit quicker. Little subtle things like that are really nice for a game like this. This game was recently remastered for the PlayStation 4, so there's no excuse not to play this game if you have any form of a Sony system. Except for the Vita. Vita people are screwed. Aside of not having money. You have that too. Again, I just love the details of everything. It looks like a real home. Not gonna be able to pick up the acoustic and play a nervous song? Uh, this takes place in Texas, kind of near Austin. Um, that's where Joel and this kid are from. The hell are you? And freaking whatever brand phone that is. <laughs> no signal, obviously. I, t I like to take moments just to read and look at everything because it it kind of expands the world around you. Get an idea for that. Well, he came back, I where guess. That was assuming that I would go to bed early, but look around for him. Oh shit. The sound of a dead dog. Um, Aww. Things are getting spooky. Maybe he's through this door. I don't know. Well, nothing. Oh. Oh, hi, bro. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was going to pop out. Are but... you okay? Yeah. Does anyone come oh, in here? you like that dog. No, we wouldn't <laughs> come in here. Don't go near the doors. Just, just stand back there. I don't like dogs. Dad, you're kind of freaking me out. What's going on? It's the Coopers. Something right with them. I, th I think they're sick. I'm kind of sick. <gasps> Howdy ho, <honey>, burrito. <laughs> Jimmy? Dad? Come here, come here. Come here. Jimmy. So our neighbor's acting a little bit weird. Oh. Jimmy, I am warning you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. And he, he's gone. Oh, no. I guess we're moving. <gasps> All right, honey. <laughs> Listen very carefully. I need you to return this watch because I don't want it. <laughs> do you have the receipt? I said, do you have the receipt? <laughs> We're going to go to the store and like this and they see me bloody and they're going to give it to me. Dad, it's four in the morning. You have any idea what's going on out there? I got some notion. Holy shit. You got blood all over you. They did a very interesting way of doing this game. They actually had the voice actors acting out the scene with a motion cap as they're performing, so the performances come off a lot more sincere in this game than most. Much like in Uncharted. Yep. Um, and this particular game is played by uh, Troy Baker as Joel. Troy Baker, you're in everything. Yeah, sure thing. He's also in Bioshock Infinite. So. <laughs> Troy Baker's guaranteed to play a, a video game hero now. Doing great. Maybe so who's the driver guy? Shut up. Uh, that's uh, Joel's brother. Oh. He said, uh, it's Uncle Tommy. Is it? Roadblocks on the highway. No getting into Travis County. We need to get the hell. So we're looking out. to get the hell out of here. Take Travis so County is near Austin, me. Texas. It's well, it's a little far, but it's and it's incredibly creepy because that's our names. Yep. <laughs> Let's hope there's not a Rodimus <laughs> Point in Texas or something. <laughs> oh, there will be. <laughs> I'd be excited about that. But then I can say, oh yeah, it's not just a name I have, it's actually a city. So you can... I like the idea of this that when something goes wrong, I mean, this isn't quite a zombie apocalypse, but it has a feel of it. Things go to shit real quick. <laughs> Holy hell. That's Lewis's farm. Oh my god. Forgot my favorite mixtape. <laughs> Making my way downtown. <laughs> <laughs> he rolls down the windows with his arms in the air. Yeah, starts yeah. jamming. You know. They said it's just uh, people in the city. We're good. Didn't Jimmy work in the city? So a little, without breaking too much of the hand of things going ahead, the people are starting to get infected by this, uh, some kind of disease or something that's making them go berserk. They're not dead like zombies. They're actually alive. They're just kind of losing their minds. We have room. If you see Twenty Eight Days Later, you kind of have an idea. Uh, the speed limit is forty-five. Uh, okay. <laughs> Pull over, sir. We should have helped him. Yeah, we should have helped him. We're dicks. Joel's a very interesting character. You'll learn a lot about him. He's not your. He's not a hero, by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, oh balls! We get to experience traffic. Our favorite. He's not exactly a hero or villain. He's protagonist. He's a person living in a shitty world. Oh God. 
Get the hell out of here, I'm Making Tommy. my way oh, downtown, shit. walking fast. Roll faster! <laughs> Homebound! Oh, God! What the fuck just happened? Did you see that? That was Tommy, too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was Rodimus Zombie. <laughs> Come on, people. Zominous. Where did he run in from? Get us out of here. I'm this trying. wouldn't be happening if I had my mixtape. Shut up, Tom! Hidey tighty tighty, get off the way, potato! I can't fucking drive through them! Go back up there! They're behind me too! There, there, there! Hold on! Guys, it's not Go. time to argue. We need to live. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Nope, that's not happening. Oh. Ow. Well, I guess the car's not gonna work. Ugh. It would have been fine if you didn't give me such a bad gift. <laughs> Everything of mine is broken except the fucking watch! <laughs> so we gotta get the hell out of here before we get completely attacked by berserk blood people. So this game does a very cinematic way of giving you control sometimes during this, but oh shit! Something that is very zombie-like about these things is that if they, they bite you or they scratch you or do a deep wound on you, you'll become infected. What is it? So you don't want that to happen. How bad? We're gonna need to run. Now she has a broken leg. I was kind of wondering, like, maybe there's like a douchey cop who's like in the middle of all this chaos. He sees like the cars parked on that next to that side. He's like, oh, I'm gonna have to give you a ticket. <laughs> He's just riding all these guys' tickets. <laughs> right? Loitering, that's a ticket. Parking your car upside down, well, that's two tickets. Impressive, but two tickets. Maybe we can hide in the gas station here. Oh no, that's not happening. Uh, uh, get out of the way, lady. <laughs> I'll hit you with my kid. <laughs> Don't look, sir. Swing him like a bat. Me, <laughs> oh, that dude's on fire. She has great taste in watches. <laughs> <laughs> Joel sees the stop sign and he stops. Gonna get out of this. <laughs> Still gets pulled over by a cop. <laughs> right. That's another ticket. <sighs> sir, why do you got a child in your arms? <laughs> oh, honey, you want to go see a movie? Because she's <laughs> apparently they're playing action movies. So. Oh man, the Apollo Theater's on fire today. <laughs> Alright, let's get the hell- Get out of the way, guy! Okay. Tommy, lead the way, you got the gun. Or I'll lead the way, whatever. Dad, I can walk, I don't need- Your leg's broken- Oh, shit! Oh, great, you made a bunch of noise. Let's get out of here, Tommy. We're almost there. We're almost there, baby. Everyone gets infected very quickly because it's a very aggressive mutation. This is very Resident Evil 2 to me, because you hide in a bar in that in the beginning of that game, too. Go, you got Sarah. Whoa, whoa, miners aren't allowed in here. <laughs> Gets another ticket, the cops just following him. <laughs> you can at least shoot your gun or something. I only shoot if I need to. So. Almost where? So if you hear the sound, there's one right on my ass right now following me. Okay. I could run faster, but I'd have to lose some weight. Honey, can I get rid of the watch, please? <laughs> <laughs> now two, fuck. Isn't good, run. Oh, thanks. It's okay, baby, we're safe. Uh, we're safe. cop, I guess? Nope, hey, cop. We need help. Stop! It's my yep, guy. definitely cop. Stop right there! Definitely oh. cop. <laughs> we're not... Sick. Got a couple of civilians on the outer perimeter. Please advise. Eddie, what about Uncle Tommy? We're gonna get you to safety and go back where I am, okay? Sir, there's a little girl. But. Yes, sir. I don't like the sound of that. What have we just been through hell? Okay, we just need. Oh, oh shit. Shit. Really? Oh, goddamn. Oh yeah, Uncle Tommy. Oh no. Uh, my finger slipped. Sarah. Oh shit. Move your hands, baby. I know, baby. I know. 
fuck the police, Sorry, seriously. <laughs> You're gonna be okay, baby. Stay with me. Right, I'm gonna pick you up. I know, baby. I know it hurts. Come on, baby. Please. I know, baby. I know. Sarah. Everything would have been fine if we had way shit. Baby. <laughs> Aww. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Come on. So this is ten minutes in. Um. Oh, oh. <laughs> Jesus! Please, please don't. Please. And title. <laughs> That's how the game begins. This is a really cool title sequence too. The number of confirmed deaths has passed two hundred. The governor has called a state of emergency. Well, hundreds and hundreds of bodies lying in the streets. So the way that you end up learning a lot about the disease, and this kind of helps explain a little bit, is that it's not exactly a disease, it's actually a fungus. Um, this fungus has been infecting people's brains and making them pretty much just lose their shit. Um, and it's spreading very quickly because it's a fungus and it's kind of hard to fight against that sort of thing. Riots have continued for a third consecutive day and winter rations are at an all-time low. This is just a little bit of a time lapse to understand how things have been working out. Basically, the world's becoming a lot more enclosed, a lot of people are dying. The government is starting to create these areas that are called quarantine zones to keep people safe. But a rebel group called the Fireflies is starting to rise to kind of go against this government group that's basically kind of keeping us all caged up. Believe in the Fireflies. And time passes. How much time, you ask? Summer. <laughs> 20 years Jeez. later. So it's not like a fresh thing that happened. This took a very unique way of taking that. This A lot of time has passed since this began. So this is the world now. I thought it was going to be like a few months. No, it's a long time. Oh, hello there, new girl. How was your morning? Want one? No, I don't. I want one. Kind of a rough girl here. Well, I have some interesting news for you. Where were you, Tess? West End District. Hey, we had a drop to make. We, Through this particular uh, point in the life, Joel and this girl named Tess have become criminals. I remember. Because it's a lot easier to make money breaking the law than following it. I'm surprised there still are laws. Within these quarantine zones, there are. Um, and they're not really paid. They're giving these things called ration cards. So basically, you work, you get to eat. You want to explain this? Bullshit. I was on my way back here. The world sucks. <laughs> and you'll only see how much the world sucks as this game progresses. It always bothered me about these like apocalypse scenarios. It's like, oh, we have to help everybody. But... We're gonna limit it for a few of you. Because you guys can't be trusted to take care of yourself. <laughs> it's like I was doing just fine before I met you, asshole. They don't matter. What matters is that Robert fucking sent them. So for one of the situation is that we've been selling things like pills and supplies to people for ration cards. Son of a bitch, he's smart. But one of our former partners, a guy named Robert, tried to have us killed for some reason. So we're gonna get some revenge on his ass. Like hell you do. And Tess knows where he's hiding. I love the amount of facial expressions they put in these characters, too. It's very... You can... Like, if you see them crying, their eyes actually water and things like that. It's a really beautiful detail. Naughty Dog is really good at that. Oh, yeah. So here's our quarantine zone. We're not in Texas anymore. I think we're in... Somewhere in Pennsylvania? America. Fucked up. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Gotta get the ration cards to eat the fucking day. We better hurry up then. So walking through these areas, you look at how the much detail are in just these little areas like this of kind of the trash. It's very everything's intricately designed. Um, everything has a point if you read to kind of learn about. They have curfews in this place. Um, these people are talking about people being forced outside of these quarantine walls to fix things, and they end up dying, but they're being forced to to be able to live here. This is why these fireflies exist, they're rebels, because they think this is a fucked up system. <laughs> Which they're not necessarily wrong. 
Of course, after seeing that first 15 minutes, you all, like, it, the whole thing's still fucked up, but that's the world that, that this place has become. Hasn't opened yet. This is something required for stability, and it's... It's the kind of thought of secure, more security equals more stability, but more security also equals less freedom. And in this world, there isn't much freedom to be had, but people are safer, in a sense. These guys were caught outside the wall. I get to see what happens to people who get caught outside the wall. First, they get scanned whether they're infected or not. There's no cure for this infection. So if you, if you get bitten or scratched or somehow breathe in the uh, spores, of these fungus, you're infected and you will die, <laughs> or at least be transformed into something awful. Get a live one. No. Oh, they found a girl who's infected. Hold her down. Do it. And she's dead. Eyes forward. I'm not sure what they do to her. I think they inject her with something. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. Right. Down. It was just a bad touch. <laughs> bad touch. <laughs> Sonic, go faster! What the fuck? Come on. Sonic! <laughs> hey, don't cross the line. No, don't. Okay. <laughs> are you infected, sir? <laughs> Tess, you waited that whole time? You'll kind of learn through this world that a lot of people in this particular quarantine zone respect Tess. She's kind of a badass. But Joel's a badass too, really. Tess either calls you Joel or calls you Texas as a nickname. I had a neighbor who did that. I'd just be glad you don't live in New Jersey. Way to go, New Jersey. <laughs> or boring. Come on, Iowa. <laughs> nice one, Hawaii. <laughs> See you, I need. There you go. See, if I was during this fiction, I would want to live in a place like Hawaii. Visiting a friend. All right, move on through. All right. By the way, I can't read. Oh shit! Get out of here! Go! Close it up! Fireflies! Fireflies are attacking these guys, so we need to get the fuck out of here. Guys, you don't need guns to fight bugs. So the lucky thing about the sprint button, you pretty much don't really have much of a stamina gauge, but you do have a pretty uh, stable health gauge. Um, this one does something a lot of games don't do nowadays. You don't re you don't have a regenerating health gauge. So much You're dependent on keeping healthy. Patch yourself up, all right. So you get shot, that damage just stays. Yeah, unless you unless you find a health kit or something to try to heal you with. And this is how health kits work. Health kits and any other item you use is a lifetime thing. So you can't pause and heal and go back into a game. You have to heal sometimes in the middle of a gunfight. Um, in the middle of an attack, but you have to strategize that way. Oh, it's like so, Left 4 Dead. Yeah. We could just let Robert go. And it takes a little bit of time. Uh, throughout the game, you have options to be able to upgrade the speed of it's these a, actions, that um, but that's later in the game. Hey, how's the East Tunnel looking? Yeah, it's clear. So I'm what we're doing, here. instead of no being able to go through the easy way, we're going to go through the hard way, sneaking out around the wall, which the quarantine zone is just surrounded by a giant wall to keep the infected people out. Um, we're going to sneak around there to be able to get to this Robert fellow who we really want to kill. With Robert? You think she'd tell me? Well, what did you tell her? The truth. I got no idea where he's hiding. Good man. And we're also learning from this conversation that the leader of the Fireflies is also looking for this Robert character that we're going to kill. Hmm. I wonder why. Hmm. Hmm. I'm very suspicious. Marlene looking for Robert? What do you make of that? I don't like it. We better find him before the fireflies do. I always preferred Raymond. <laughs> Damn it, Joel. <laughs> I thought it was a good watch. <laughs> Joel's actually kind of, if you look at him, he's a pretty big hey, guy. How's it going? And he uses that to his it's advantage a lot. Out there. How are we looking over here? Uh, it's been quiet. No signs of military or There's also a lot of Liam O'Brien in this game. What else is he in? A uh, ton of stuff. He's Joel, give me a hand with this. A lot of video games, uh, a lot of anime too. <laughs> hey, um, before I help, you gotta turn on the TV. I wanna watch the Apocalypse Network. <laughs> Cause you know we have electricity and stuff. <laughs> Apocalypse now. <laughs> it's like going on a plane and watching the movie alive. Oh, God, this place reeks. 
It's like this is an appropriate, but it's the only DVD we have. Let there be light. This game is very it takes this opportunity to give a very progressive way of learning how the mechanics work. We have the ability to run, we have the ability to crouch. Vaulting, your average fare from there. We're about to pick up our backpack, which is our main key to be able to use supplies. Backpacks are still here from last time. There's my backpack. Let's go get it. I noticed when you vaulted over that it, it kicked some dirt onto the camera. Oh, ammo. I love the little details of that, especially when it gets on the camera itself. Light will bounce off of it and water, blood. Um, so I have a pistol. Uh, something to keep in mind with this kind of game. Ammunition can be rather limited. All right. The harder the difficulty is, the more limited this ammunition is. So, like, see, I have four bullets. If I get in a situation, you got to make your shots count, and you got to try to conserve ammo when you can. Because if you just shoot everything, you'll get in these situations where you're overwhelmed and you can't fight people off with your bare fists all the time. Want to boost me up? No. This also utilizes, on top of a lot of the fighting, uh, this utilizing uh, a lot of teamwork <laughs> moments like this. Now she's about to become the Incredible Hulk, or She-Hulk. Come on. Because this is about to defy physics here in a second. <laughs> yep, I'll hold up this 265-pound man. <laughs> uh, Tess, you work out. I like that. <laughs> she seemed, She reminds me a lot of Sigourney Weaver from Alien. She's kind of tough in Realm of Tell. I mean, she, she's obviously made of this world. There's not much... There's not many vanity items in a world like this. Be careful. What am I but she's particularly a tomboy. Got a trick question. We're in Pizza Joe's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, after Wind Waker, he opened up a pizza shop and it did not work. It did not work. I See, this is what I mentioned before this game started. The beauty is in the details of this game. They do a lot of things of making each area look specifically unique. Some areas that have nothing to do with the game's progress or where you need to go but everything has these intricate details that are unique from the other area you've been. And I think it's just amazing. Joel wanted to go the hard way. And you can tell by areas like this that nature is really kind of... In the 20 years, nature's kind of taken over these suburban areas very quickly. In a game like this, it also aids to explore... Like Bioshock Infinite, it doesn't hurt to look around Where's everywhere you can because you'll find a lot of hidden somewhere. supplies. Like ammunition, healing kits, and you'll see some other kind of uh, supplies we find later. But I gotta find me a ladder. Oh, there's <laughs> one. <laughs> got it. Well, it was easy. Oh, great, bring it over. They've obviously used this path a number of times. See, this is, I always trade this aspect of more of the platforming elements of this game. Because you have to travel first. by trying to find different items, working Lady. together to do certain tasks you couldn't do alone. Else. And then there's also a number of combat and there's sneaking no areas, too. This way. This looks like maybe a college apartment. Big apartment, I guess. <laughs> See, look, some drawers to open. And there's some screws. Um, if you find these little piles of just these screws and nuts and bolts and things like that, they work as a form of currency. Um, you don't use them to buy things necessarily, but you'll find these upgrade benches where you can do things like upgrade your uh, guns and how many guns you can carry on your backpack at one time and things like that. So collecting that helps. Um, this is another collectible. I'm using my flashlight to show. These are Firefly dog tags. It's another, just a, mainly it's for collectability for... Uh, not even any particular events, but really just for trophies. Um, the flashlight works really well in this game. Does not require you to search for batteries, thank God. Down through here. You just might need to shake the, the flashlight every now and then, which just requires you to shake your controller. For his sake. The light doesn't work in super hard mode. We get our merchandise if you back. notice, the light really does do these really harsh contrasts to the things around you, so it almost makes it scarier because it's hard to see what's around the flashlight, but you can see what's clearly in the flashlight. It's a creepy element. Uh-oh, spores. Oh. Pretty necessity in this world are gas masks. Because, again, if you breathe in these spores, you get infected. Where the hell are all these coming from? Now, if you're wondering they're why there's randomly just spores yeah, down here, when right. people get infected, their bodies start to become slowly covered with these fungus they're like this culprit. guy. When they die, 
They basically become these giant hives of these funguses that shoot out more spores to create more infected people and spreading it. So the more people that die from this, the more it spreads. And the only way to get rid of it is to burn their bodies. Should be able to fit through here. You don't. Well, you don't have to necessarily burn them. Killing them, I mean, and just avoiding okay. them really. Yeah. They're not like zombies where they, they won't come back alive. They're dead. Be careful. <laughs> when people are infected, they are actually alive. Even though they act like zombies, they're live people. Easy. What was Joel's <laughs> career exactly? Like, what did he do? He worked in construction. Uh, He's a pretty blue collar worker. This guy. Don't leave me to turn. So here's a situation that you'll find commonly in this game. I found some ammunition. What do you want to do? I could just leave him and save the bullet, or I can kill him out of mercy. But I'll lose a bullet. I'm gonna kill him out of mercy. Because I'd feel like a duck otherwise. <laughs> Damn it, my finger slipped. <laughs> you could just morally left him behind and really doesn't hit any kind of ramifications within the game itself, but it would make you feel like a dick. You can really see how the spores are kind of infecting the environment around them. The thing is, the disease doesn't kill people. Not bad. You hear that? Like, even over time, it just spreads. And this is our first introduction to one of the enemy types. This is known as a runner. These are what we were dealing with at the beginning of the game. Now, check out this mode. This is a focus mode that Joel has, where he, he uses his hearing and super senses in a way to be able to see enemies through walls that might be talking or moving. This is such an important maneuver to be able to utilize, because it helps you see things without having to look at them. So I'm going to choke this one zombie to death. Again, they're living people, so they have to breathe, so you can kill them that way. These, pe these runners are basically as human as humans are. I mean, beyond the fact that they can infect you if they bite you, uh, they are pretty much... Atomically speaking, humans, so they can die all the same ways. But the problem with them is, as easy they are to fight like a normal person one on one, they can overwhelm you pretty quick if there's a bunch of them. So I gotta find the best way to go for this. Do I snake? Do I fight him? I'm gonna fight him. But I don't necessarily wanna waste all the bullets. See, even one shot, they're still alive, so. Oh, damn. So just fight him off with <laughs> fists. Right. What's also oh, interesting is if you fight him during different environments, there's a lot of environmental kills that automatically trigger. Plus, did you see the blood that was on my camera? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, time to use your Wei Shen powers. <laughs> Maybe I can grab and run with them for a while. <laughs> uh, now that I'm here, it's time to make some toast. We found a health bar. That, those are little kind of food items you can find for temporary health. I am temporary health, I should say, but they're not going to heal as much as, say, a med kit will. Ooh, more ammunition. Hey. See, taking your time to look around these rooms and keeping loaded on your ammunition is pretty good. You can see the gauge at the bottom right. You can keep track of the weapon you're holding. The amount of health you have is in the green bar and the amount of bullets that you have. And you always want to keep a pretty full clip because reloading time could be death. See, you could have tried to sneak by the wa these uh, runners. I was about to say walkers, but <laughs> runners. Um, but what happens is that they hear you when you go up the stairs and they chase you out anyway, so fucking fight them. Just a piece of advice. Some health and a note. I try to pick up as many notes as I can because they did kind of describe the world around them. I like to kind of read them because they give you insights of the people that are here, so those people... Uh, end up getting infected while sneaking around the wall. Basically like what we we're, were doing, but since they got infected, they're like, see everybody, we're dying. Peace. It's also nice because a lot of these notes are hand scratched, so you can do this little reading mode, which helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I could, had a hard time figuring that out for a while, so I was like, it's hard to... Oh shit, I can't read this. You got all these poor bastards wishing they were living on the inside. So, Tess, you want a granola bar? So these people were actually people that lived on the outside trying to come inside, and we're trying to get outside. That's, that's the irony of it. Not everyone's let into these quarantine zones. Imagine how life is outside of these areas. This is the safe area. <laughs> Some fresh air. With big finger quotes. That's the one thing I love about the outside. Fucking hate hey, Tess, you want to play shit. some hoops? Why don't you ask Bill to get you some of them air fresheners? Thanks. 
They were in a Since we're in Philadelphia, I was not born and raised <laughs> here. In the quarantine zone, I spent most of my days. <laughs> Searching for granola and putting on a gas mask. And shooting some beebles at some zombie dudes. Here. When a couple of guys Coming killed in. my daughter. I got it. <laughs> Still don't like my watch. <laughs> Though if you notice, he hasn't taken it off in 20 years. Oh, yeah. He keeps the watch on. It's broken, but obviously you could imagine why he would keep the watch. Could trade it in for something better. Damn it. <laughs> Plank fell down. Someday. Some more teamwork with friends, or basically me doing all the work, and she's standing there like, Joel, go get that thing. I'll get it. <laughs> all right, here, you can catch this plank of wood, right? Here. Diving Pass board! <laughs> Heads up, pow! <laughs> knock her off the thing, knock her completely out, oh shit. <laughs> it's a bit heavy. I think I can handle it. Wuss! Right. Ain't heaven to me, wuss. <laughs> uh, how am I getting back up? Uh, I guess I'll just go <laughs> just in here. Flip, flips you off. <laughs> That's how. <sighs> you know what, you might have flipped me off, but you're still better than the watch. The interesting thing about the relationship between Joel and Tess is it's not clearly stated of what their relationship really is. They're obviously business partners here in a sense. It's kind of subtly hinted that they did have some romantic involvement at some point. Maybe, maybe frequently, but it's hard to say for sure. More like uh, friends with benefits? I think that's pretty much what it came down to. Stress relief. Yeah, I think it's a lot. I think it's one of those things that they're friends and they worked as partners, and then at one point they had sex maybe, and then they went, okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, we made it back inside. Clearly, we're safe. Nod. Shut it. <laughs> no, Joel, not the door. I mean, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. Shut it. Damn it. Pick up that <laughs> sure I knew you would. So where we were living is actually kind of the nicer neighborhood. This is kind of the the wasteland ghetto of this particular <laughs> quarantine zone. Ah, uh, yes, I'm finally rich. This is all I ever want. I get to live in an area where I won't get shot. Maybe. <laughs> no soldiers, none of Robert's men, yeah? <sighs> Did you see that, Joel? That was a Monopoly card. Well, that'll make it more interesting. <laughs> he thinks he's getting food. <laughs> he thinks he's gonna pass go. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> he thinks he's gonna collect $200. <laughs> Near the fireplace. Not right now, Terrence. No, 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 it's good. Look, Not now, you hear me? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Tess doesn't take shit from anybody. Not even herself. So, hey, dogs. Uh, they sell dogs for food. You eat dogs, kind of like cat, cows and things like that. Aww. Touch it, you buy it. We can't just have a dog companion. Tess, it's been a while. You don't visit us anymore. This parry is a little bit intimidating. <laughs> Hello, bum. Excuse me, visit? We have no homes. Hey, look at boxing match. <laughs> uh, that's a poor follow-up to this Zodiac tournament. Didn't realize you two were together. Go ahead. Head stuff his fire into one of those flaming grill things. <laughs> but nobody's impressed because they're just used to shit. <laughs> They'd be happy, but all the celebration makes them hungry. <laughs> An old headache. Don't ask. Look at all these shops. It's just people just like, I'm willing to show you complete crap if you give me some ration cards. <laughs> Looks like we can... This definitely comes off as the shanty town of the uh, quarantine zone. I at least had an apartment. These guys just live in <laughs> bum holes. Hey, if you give me some bullets, I can show you a magic trick, and he does the removing thumb thing. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! What about the bullet and you just walk away? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, a wanted poster. This is Marlene. Uh, she's the leader of the Fireflies. I doubt we'll ever see her again. <laughs> um, um. 
Anyway. I can't believe it's not me. I'm upset. This woman's... I'm just like, hi, is your baby okay? She's not holding a baby, by the way. Kind of a little crazy. <laughs> eh, there's a note on the ground. So this is kind of fucked up. As I mentioned, you get drafted. <laughs> See, fuck this, obviously. Uh, you get drafted to go outside and work. And that's outside the wall. Which is awful. You don't get a choice. You just... You people picked, you're gonna go outside the wall and uh, work. Probably die. Sheesh. It's a way of clearing people out. <laughs> It's all control and maintenance. Bring a physician certificate? There is very government official. Yeah, I was about to say, but what if, like, there are no physicians? Exactly. <laughs> Just get some other dude who's like, all right, I'm the temporary I'm doctor. Robert. You're good. I'll be a doctor as long as I don't have to go outside Half the wall. <laughs> went back to the war. He's there now. So, can I interest you with a get out of jail free card? <laughs> what are you buying? <laughs> can I just. <laughs> Good, because if I end up in jail, wait a minute. <laughs> Trips. <laughs> she just does stuff off to be like, oh, cool. <clears throat> I just want one of them to trip, like, just during a serious moment, just to lessen it. Well, this is like a gunfighting area. <laughs> Place boxes in convenient areas for cover? Sure. Let us through. You guys need to turn around and head back if you know what's good for you. Our okay. Beef isn't with you. We just want Robert. <laughs> Credit no start rolls. Did it? Did it? Did it? The last of now. It. I'm not going anywhere without Robert. Bitch. Oh, bad. This is how conversations call. work in this world. And get your dumb ass out of here. Fuck this. Like that. <laughs> All right, Tess. You ready? Yeah. Kick an ass, Tess. I'll cover you. Now, gunfights. Can be difficult at first to get used to, um, because I mentioned you have very minimal ammunition. Um, if one thing that helps a lot with this game, and I mean emphasize a lot, is to get used to how the AI for the enemy characters work. One thing for sure, enemies rarely, rarely ever shoot you as soon as your head pops up. It's usually if you keep your head up too long, a lot of times they'll hit you. So if you shoot and then quickly take cover, you should be okay in these situations. Seems to be kind of like they're kind of like you, and that it takes a second for them to get a beat on you. Yeah, basically. Well, the big thing is that it, at this point of the game, you could try to fire willy nilly, but you're gonna run out of ammunition quickly. Also, you notice they were taking cover constantly unless I raise my head. Here. That'll do. Not about that, he gave me a health kit. Good. So you notice I'm not healing from that. Nicely done. That's how you change equipment here. So I'm gonna <laughs> heal myself a bit. Me too. I'm not Elizabeth, but guys. fucking here. If Robert's good at one thing, <laughs> it's right in blank. Checks. Book or catch. <laughs> we and that. such, I guess. <laughs> I imagine her skipping, but she's just like doing it all frumpily. <laughs> Arms crossed, like. <laughs> no, just completely limp at her side. <laughs> Please stop. Hey, this is just making me up. uncomfortable. <laughs> God damn it, Joel. Do you ever see the med kit reflected on your body in any way? No, no, because they. they Insinuate that you keep it in your backpack. Now, when you equip the particular item, you see him pull it out of his backpack or pocket and hold it in his hand, but you never see it on the bag. Um, some of the other gear you get, usually large Damn. weapons and things like that, you will see outside the bag. You don't have, like, an infinite whole backpack. Okay, so you don't see the bandages, for example, when he uses them. Oh, you do see it when it's on your body sometimes. When you, like, if you've used them. But you don't necessarily see them just hanging out of the bag or anything like that. Right. So here's another a little situation with uh, multiple options. More Robert's guys. Some more guys, areas to hide. Two they don't see me yet. To take so I could gunfight them, or right I now, could conserve the ammunition Jesus. and try to kill them stealthily or sneak by them. Um, the easiest call. thing to do, at least in my this opinion, is, is to kill them sneakily. Here. Because you don't waste any ammunition. In fact, you don't waste really any supplies at this point. And luckily, since Tess is with you, you can do these team-based kills. Like, she's taking one guy out. I'm gonna take the other one out. Move up. Move up. Completely silently. You gotta be careful too, because there's two guys in that building too. So you hold down X to choke. You don't automatically choke them, so this can be a dangerous way to do it if there's a lot of guys around. But it's also the best way to save on supplies. Um, there's two more guys in here. They haven't noticed me. 
So you can see she's sneaking on one side of the building. I know she's getting in position to kill the one dude, so I gotta get in position to kill the other dude. Jordan Street. Lone soldier showed up with a group of about five kids, all in handcuffs. Now the little viewing thing I'm doing right there, where I'm able to see them with the focus. Although it seems kind of broken, you can only see people if they're speaking or making sound. If they don't make any sound, you can't see them with this mode. It's basically like a heightened sense. You're taking an opportunity to listen. But um, interesting thing is that uh, in, on the hardest difficulty of this game, you lose that ability completely. Which to me makes me go, oh my god, that game has to be almost impossible. Take down. And you'll see why I see that later in the game. Because there's some points where you're almost dependent on that, that seeing sight thing right there. I could take a lantern with me, but I'm gonna fuck it. <laughs> I have a flashlight, that's all I need. Some more health items if I get hurt. But I managed to get through the area without getting any dings on me. I mean, in big open areas like this, I've beat this game, so I know how to usually sneak through these areas without getting caught and killing all the dudes. Not every area is going to give me that opportunity, but a lot of them will. Now, this area is an area where a lot of beginning gamers do get killed. Because they don't know how to handle it, necessarily. As I mentioned, a way to make this game go from hard to acceptable is to understand the AI of how each character works. You would assume that a normal human would react differently than, say, an infected human. For the most part, that is correct. Humans in this area tend to kind of follow a certain pattern of movement, but they have a bunch of variances in the way they go. Runners and other kind of the infected folk tend to move in a very similar circular pattern or go the same way over and over and over again because they're idiots. But fighting zombies, they tend to attack you rather directly. They don't take cover, they just charge you. These guys will try to take cover, they'll try to flank you. They're a lot smarter. They're just like you, basically. Um, now, if you notice, I picked up a bottle on top of that particular container there. You can pick up various things like bottles and bricks. They're specific use, mainly distractions. Um, you can throw them to the other side of the room. The person will go to, to see what it is, and then you kill them. I'm just moving over here so no one can see him and choke! Okay. Now the nice thing about finding bricks is that you can also you can use them to distract and you can also hit people in the face with bricks. <laughs> Big surprise. <laughs> I'm sensing this crate and there's nothing in it. <laughs> Whatever it is, I want it. 68-inch LCD TV? Sure. <laughs> Pretty sure it'll work. So because I don't sense anyone, it's pretty clear that no one's specifically near me. But there are a couple guys in this garage over here. If you ever want to do things quickly, you could just go in there and shoot, but there's a good chance that you'll die. Out, just completely outnumbered. If you can tell, one shot did a lot of damage to me, and if you especially get overwhelmed, you can die pretty quickly. There's also a pretty big sound cue if people see you. You'll hear this kind of sound, this pretty, this rumble. You'll probably hear it in a moment if someone sees me. It's a good way to indicate if you're in the line of sight, and you can usually get cover before they really notice you. This guy doesn't seem to notice me. He's an idiot. Someone makes it through this door, by God. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm alive right now. <laughs> Love my thick Philadelphia accent. <laughs> I just assume everyone's from Texas like Joel. <laughs> there's a guy down there, and there's two guys right there. I think it's best if we just choke everybody. <laughs> now at this point, I really don't have that many supplies, which also makes the fact that I'm not running and shooting that important. There's some point where shooting will be the better option, but that's when I have a lot more guns. Well, I'm sensing that maybe, if I throw my watch at him, I'll get rid of it. <laughs> More Philadelphian accent. Also, you'll learn your partner, for some odd reason, bad guys never see them. Ever. 
So never be afraid if you're like if sometimes you'll see your partner like run right in front of people and they won't notice her. It's one little mistake. Hear that rumbling sound? Nice and quiet text. That, that means someone was seeing me. Now if it goes on for too long, they spot you and they've found your location, so you can't hide anymore. Sneaking music. Actually, no music. This game uses <laughs> music very minimally. Sneaking, sneaking. Feels not sneaking music! What the hell See, now that? you can hear someone say... There we gun. go. <laughs> <laughs> I figured sneaking was wasted. There's one guy left anyway, so... Well, oh, okay. Shot me through it. Okay. You can tell taking cover is pretty nice. Wait it out. See where they're coming. Oh, they're coming right for me. Good. Perfect. Come on. Quick test. Lift them up or something. Oh, there he is. As I mentioned, they usually take cover until you try to shoot them. Don't stay there too long. Uh, what you saw from me from doing that side is you can switch the aiming reticle from your left to your right. Whatever makes you more comfortable. Or depending on kind of if you're against a wall or something. That's actually pretty useful. Slow us down. Yeah. You're right. Come on, the docks are this way. Ooh, a shank. Or a shiv. A shiv allows me to do a number of things. Shivs are very important in this game. Let's do this. They're basically just kind of all-purpose knives. Uh, I can use them. Notice before, like, I had to hold down to choke. If I have a shiv, at the sacrifice of breaking the shiv, I can kill someone instantly. So I can grab them and stab them, and they'll keep them from making any sound. And I can also do it very quickly. Shivs can also be used to unlock doors you can't normally enter yourself. And a lot of the doors that are locked by shivs are, contain a lot of cool stuff. One of the biggest recommendations I have in this game, at least always have one shiv. You run out of shivs, you a lot of times walk by this door that you need it for, and you just have to go, ugh. You'll see me do that a number of times where I'm like, I used all my <laughs> shivs up door, fuck. <laughs> Don't help me or nothing. I'm gonna try to... No, no, wait. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna pull the... Yep, she's not helping. Oh, there's a lot of guys here. There's our boy. There's Robert. This area can look a little intimidating. Let's go wrap this up. But if you know the way, this area is actually kind of easy. <laughs> okay, I was about to say, um, not like that. No. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Howdy. Yeah. Well, we lost our contact. <laughs> Riding on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> the hills are alive. <laughs> the sound of Joel. <laughs> the enemies start clapping. Oh, it's a horse. I haven't seen it. Oh. Then they get shot. So if you go to the left way, there's a lot of cover over here. There's also one dude that stands no chance, no chance in hell. He's got. <laughs> That'd be great if my character had a Vince McMahon walk. Um, <laughs> that's how he approaches. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to animate Joel doing a Vince McMahon walk. <laughs> so, gotta stab this guy, or I could, or choke him. So that's a shiv move. Using shivs actually breaks them. They're pretty much put together little swords. <laughs> one and done? Yeah, they're one and done. Um, there's gonna be a point in the games where you can actually kind of upgrade your shivs to where they can last longer. Uh, thank God. <laughs> Because there's actually a number of enemies that if you fight them up close, and if you try to do sneaking kills, you can only kill them with shivs. And you'll see, that's going to be in a couple parts. An enemy that's very scary. <laughs> now, I could hit him with that brick. You could. Or I could throw this watch at him, and I just hate this watch. <laughs> 20 years later, the watch still <laughs> bothers him. <laughs> now that doesn't work, it bothers me even more. <laughs> And the worst part is, it's fused to my arm. So he didn't see me, luckily. And they won't see Tess, so don't worry about Tess. I think that's just to keep it from being ridiculously frustrating. Oh, yeah. Especially later in the game when there's a lot of, not too many cover areas, and you'll see, uh, I'm not going to spoil, but another character try to run around and get people's attention. This guy won't see me in the dark if I don't move. <laughs> the same way, they can be attracted by sound. Luckily, sneaking is pretty quiet, and it's not that slow either. You can see he moves at a pretty good quip. 
All right. I'll get you a chokehold. Let's just have a conversation here in the garage. <laughs> I, I just want to do a little dancing. I don't want to do anything else except kill you. <laughs> After he's dead, I take off my watch and put it on his wrist. <laughs> Done. You're Joel now. And then walks away like Vince McMahon. <laughs> uh, I'm finally feeling good about the apocalypse. <laughs> I don't have to worry about any other guys over there. I just go take out these two dudes. Not too difficult. Of course, this is another common mistake. That guy hiding behind there, no matter what, will see you in the current position he's in. And a lot of people will go out and get attacked right there. Um, of course, that doesn't happen to me. Look, buddy. Just don't do anything stupid. <laughs> I don't have to worry this about cover. Yeah, except for Tess made me jump. So, as I mentioned, there's this one guy over here that if I step behind here, he will see me. He's just right there. So I can't get a hot random on this. But luckily, I have something to my advantage known as a brick. This is why these items are kind of useful. Get around this corner. And lob it like a grenade. A good spot. There we go. The fuck was that? Yeah, I heard it so <laughs> oh, what's that over there? Well, let's go check it out. Okay. <laughs> and that's how you take care of business. I thought they were gonna be like break, and then they just start shooting it, <laughs> shooting the break. <laughs> <laughs> the break's got a gun. <laughs> they put it. They put a gun down next to it, and they run back to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> the guy just sneaks and puts a gun right next to it, and then lays next to him and puts himself a gunpoint. He's got me! <laughs> <laughs> he falls off the railing and into the ocean. We just talk, Robert, Robert sucks. We got fucking nothing to talk about. Put your gun down. Go fuck yourself. And you're out of ammo. Why, why would you throw the gun, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I still had the brick. Robert, I just, I just want to talk. I, I, wait, come back. I, do you want to watch? <laughs> just whip him right in the eye with it. I make a mistake here. I'm like, nope, that's nowhere. He's this way. I would have lost him, but luckily he's an idiot. And got himself trapped behind a gate. The hell he's just like, damn it. <laughs> Stroking his beard. Uh, motherfucker. I can talk my way out of this. None at all. Bang. I'm just gonna get out of here. See ya! <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Why did you even try? We missed you. Look, whatever it is you heard, it ain't true, okay? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what guilty people always say. tell us where the guns are? So this guy stole all of our guns. And guns are kind of valuable around here, if you can't tell. Look, all right, Joel, be muscle. You <laughs> should... <laughs> Sure, we need Joel to be muscled. Can't test his stop, bench press. Stop, stop. <laughs> Let me do stop. some root and toot and kick your ass and. Quit your squirming. <laughs> you were saying. I sold them. Sold my guns, motherfucker. I didn't have much of a choice. I owed someone. You owed us. I say you bet on the wrong horse. I just need more time. Just, uh, give me a week. You know, I'm <laughs> He's trying to kill us. He hadn't tried to <laughs> fucking kill me. Who like has that. our guns? I can't. You just give me All a right, Joel. Well, Ow. I guess we're gonna find <laughs> I can't. Who has our guns? <laughs> he looks back. Why, why is this watch on my broken arm? <laughs> <laughs> the fireflies. The Joel's like, oh, I don't know, looking at ways. What? I just wish the watch was like a really derpy looking watch. Like it has like the <laughs> like stupidest Mouse. cartoon character on it. <laughs> like <laughs> fucking Mickey Mouse watch with broken arms. What do you say? It has the creepiest oh, eyes, and the eyes are pointing oh, in different oh, directions. Oh, <laughs> just go get him. That is a stupid idea. Just Tess being a badass. Well, now what? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> we go get our merchandise back. How? I don't know. We explain it to them. Hey, can we have the guns back? Let's go find a firefly. We won't have to look very far. Oh, hey, it's Marlene, the leader of the oh. fireflies. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Why are you here? Will you sign my wanted poster? Robert sold her all of our guns, so we want them back. And she's doesn't look Robert. too well. She got shot. 
And he did. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> I did this magic. The guns he you like you, that? They weren't his to sell. <laughs> I'm not from Texas, but I'll talk that way. I'll, I'm just get. I'm next to Texas so, to Joel, so. <laughs> you're from Alaska because you're far away. I don't like how this works. <laughs> <laughs> How many cards are we talking about? I don't give a damn about ration cards. Joel's thinking of a way to slip to watch in her pocket. Smuggled out of the city. <laughs> you see him just quietly that? sneaking up, and she slaps <laughs> his hand away. Back. Then <laughs> stop it. How do we know you got him? Way well, I hear the military's been wiping you guys out. Yeah, the Fireflies getting their ass kicked right now. So, uh, I'll show you the weapons. It looks like uh, Marlene might need my help, and we kind of need hers because we need our guns back. So this is going to lead us to our main story on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so far, the adventures of Joel being very small in that area. In the next part, we are leaving the quarantine zone and seeing what's out there in the world. Well, this will surely be our absolutely funniest, not the least bit uncomfortable Let's Play that we've ever done. <laughs> And will ever do for the rest of our lives. <laughs> oh, you don't even know yet. <laughs> this is innocent shit right now. So, after this, we're going to play Orphan Suicide 2000 Simulator. It's great. <laughs> Not a very long game. <laughs> Joel needed the money. <laughs> Watch Breaking Simulator. <laughs> I once I challenged someone to draw like I don't even any artist wants to. I want you to draw the derpiest looking cartoon character that would be on Joel's watch. <laughs> that would make him hate it. I knew my daughter was a fan, but I fucking hate Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Daddy, you gonna be a brony? I do. What is that? I don't. <laughs> I, I know I ride a pony, but I, we have a horse, but it, it's grown up and real <laughs> and a horse. Why does she have real life hands? I don't. <laughs> Why are there 14 numbers on this thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm lightheaded. <laughs> you know. I decided not to do the first fucking part of Nino Cooney because it was uncomfortable. And to do all through this, I'm kind of silent, like Jesus Christ. And here you fuck guys, you fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this watch, darling. <laughs> you two are unbefucking believable. I feel like this game is dark enough <laughs> that our humor is just going to increase out of uncomfortable feeling. <laughs> Like, I like dark comedy as much as anyone, but you two were unfazed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Am I just gonna have to turn off my sensitivity completely? Uh, well, <laughs> well, well, I was hurt, but I, I went awe when the girl died. I was like, no, no. Yeah, her. that's not a genuine. You guys were silent during that part, which just showed enough respect yeah, like, for I it. was into it. I was like, oh my god, no, not her, but and then, like, the watch, and I was like, okay, I have to make some jokes, too. Like, I can't, like, well, I yeah, can't be all sad. I, I'm almost, I'm more desensitized because I know that it only gets worse from here. <laughs> but also, it helps that the characters that show up are a little bit more... When Ellie shows up, it does get, you get, luckily, Ellie has a little bit of a more light element. <laughs> Tess is not exactly the most light character. <laughs> <laughs> I like still... just, that's the worst watch in the world. <laughs> <laughs> like, what really got me was the 14 number. <laughs> it just says 102 for no reason. <laughs> like, how can he even fit on the fucking wall? <laughs> <laughs> like, where did you get this? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so. For this one part, you didn't put in the subtitles you did for part two on, right? Yes. In fact, in the Let's Play, you'll notice me go, wait a minute, <laughs> and pause, and turn it on. 
So I think for this one part, instead of doing an uncut com and edited commentary, I'll have uncut commentary and then just the raw video. That's fine. For this one part. Um, for later parts, depending on how much dialogue goes on in between cutscenes, I'll decide if we do that, because we've been doing a lot of dialogue-intensive Let's Plays recently. Mm hmm And this one can get pretty dialogue-intensive. So I'm still deciding, with, like, uh, especially with Bioshock Infinite, we haven't finished that by the time this is recorded. But um, depending on what happens in the next parts, it'll either be <laughs> uncut and edited, or um, uncut and raws. I'm still laughing just imagining this... <laughs> Pinkie Pie watch with big man hands <laughs> with 14, 14 numbers 14 numbers on it <laughs> and, and <laughs> Joel desperately trying to be kind to his daughter <laughs> trying to be like you know he's thinking this is the shittiest watch I've ever seen but I gotta be nice but he has to be proud of it <laughs> and no matter what he does he can't get rid of this fucking watch 20 years into an apocalypse <laughs> I can imagine it only got smashed and its face is all like contorted now. <laughs> Piggy Pie's face is like eyes are bulging and, <laughs> and like has, every every hour passes like she has like a new saying or something. <laughs> but since it's so old it, it comes like a low battery saying we're just like bulging. I sell hard drugs. <laughs> Let's get some club kiss. <laughs> He's trying to sneak by all these like people. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go to Apple Acres. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Sound like Pinkie Pie. <laughs> I missed that show. <laughs> Twenty years ago. <laughs> Jim, you're fucking fired. <laughs> It's a shame it was never a season 607. Oh, oh man. Th this watch. This watch. <laughs> Stupid watch. <laughs> of all the fucking things in this let's play, I didn't think, like, oh, Last of Us is going to be, like, super serious and, you know, the, 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 the infection. And then, like, I see the watch and I'm like, well, that's it. That's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, uh, we'll get in situations that luckily there's a lighter character to outweigh some of the darker moments. <laughs> I cannot wait to see how you guys react to the winter season. God. Ugh. Ugh. I uh, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the first of The Last of Us. We got a number of them to go. Oh, boy. <laughs> the straw hat now. Straw hat. No. <laughs> Stupid watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> the first watch for everything. 